ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Red Eyes Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always great to have you with us. I'm Henrik, and this is a show dedicated to exposing lies, dispelling the mythmakers, opposing the hostile elites within our countries and their attack on tradition, Western culture, and civilization. We also deal with many of the politically incorrect subjects that have become untouchable and uh, no-go zones for those who have become thought criminals in this brave new world. And simply all the opinions that the establishment have deemed to be too dangerous. Well, why do we do this? Well, because someone has to address it and be honest about it and where it will lead if it continues, no matter how difficult it is. Well, today we're going to uh, switch topic a bit and talk about a recent slew of deaths that have occurred among holistic doctors in, uh, in America. As you know, we are interested in health, not from a new or you know alternative perspective, because... This is really the wrong word for it. We are interested in the uh, traditional ways of dealing with many health issues uh, that we've had a lot of knowledge about over a long period of time coming to us from uh, our ancestors. It's uh, not about being completely opposed to modern medicine. There are some really good things within that, some new advancements that's part of new knowledge picked up along the way based on research and science and accurate information. So it's not a black and white issue. However, having said that, there is a tremendous corrupt industry that have been built around the emergence of this new medicine, uh, what they call today orthodox medicine. Again, really the wrong word for it since it's fairly new. But uh, this new field has been hijacked by interests that goes against ours of well-being and health. These are financial interests, and in some cases they're even part of a larger geopolitical strategy, I would say, Uh, perhaps even group evolutionary strategy that plays into many other topics that we uh, address on this program as well. You know, we have corrupt organizations such as the FDA, the CDC, uh, the EPA, etc., that have been run by interests that goes against ours, clearly. And they are not honest about the things they claim to be concerned with. It's uh, very easy to figure this out, actually. So, you know, keep this in mind and uh, do some research on the people at the head of some of these organizations. Well, we have with us today Erin Elizabeth. She has uh, been a long-time activist with a passion for the healing arts, uh, working within the area for about 25 years. Her website is healthnutnews.com. It's uh, among one of the top 20 natural health sites uh, worldwide. She is an author, public speaker, and her uh, stories have uh, recently been featured on uh, some of the national networks. Uh, she has an interesting story herself on how she overcame vaccine injuries, Lyme disease, and also significant weight gain that we're going to talk some more about in the second hour. Welcome, Erin. Thank you so much for uh, coming on with us. Uh, we appreciate your time today. I know how busy you are, so it's, uh, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, Henrik. Thank you. Well, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I've been uh, following some of the news items on your uh, your website, healthnutnews.com. And I think one of the stories that really uh, has taken off here for obvious reasons is the one we're going to get into in more detail here uh, at the beginning in terms of the all the deaths of the holistic doctors that have, uh, uh, I mean, we can we, we need to run through this, of course, how many it is and whatnot. But I remember hearing about Dr. Bradstreet uh, in in four, in is it Florida? I believe he was in first, and and he is really one of the first cases uh, that I heard about. About he was into he was an autism uh, researcher and, and and a doctor, and but things have just tr- you know transpired from this point, and we have a number of these people that have uh, been discovered uh, dead. It's just it's just such a bizarre case. Tell us about how kind of you got involved and like became one of the uh, <laughs> the prime researchers on this, Aaron. Sure. It was just kind of a, it is unintended. Like I say, this, the series, so to speak was of course, totally unintended, but I had seen rumors going around just after his death. And then I'd seen the uh, memorial page that they'd put up for Dr. Brad street. And I'd really admired his work. We were supposed to be at autism one, but then didn't end up going, but uh, we would have seen him there. So I just, I thought that some of the rumors need to be laid to rest. There were just so many things, oh, this happened or that happened. So I just put the facts, just the facts that we knew at that point out in an article. And of course, did say that he was admired and just there were countless people, all mostly positive, posting, uh, you know, what a what a great doctor he was and how much he helped their children. Uh, and I've even met some of those, met some of those people now. So I just started with that article. And then as I was writing it, uh, I got a call from a friend 
that worked for at an office uh, for Dr. Hedendahl here in Florida, and he was found dead on Father's Day. Uh, little did we know there was another holistic doctor that same day. So that was just within all in 72 hours, we had three doctors. And yes, Dr. Bradstreet was, as you'd asked, from Florida, but was now practicing uh, just a state north of us in Georgia. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, right. so within 72 hours from the 19th to the 21st, we had uh, sadly three holistic doctors um, that all had died. So, Is there any reason, I mean, we can talk more about what actually happened to, to Dr. Bradstreet, but is there any reason here to believe that, uh, I mean, obviously it's, it's murder when it comes to Bradstreet, there's no question about that. Uh, but is there more behind it? Is, is there a reason why he was killed? Well, they are saying right now, um, and I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm just saying what the what the authorities are saying is alleged uh, suicide for, for Dr. Bradstreet. Some of the other doctors were uh, confirmed murders, but they're saying alleged uh, suicide. Um, it seems so impossible but, considering how he died, doesn't it? He, oh, I, yes, I would agree. And they won't close out the, uh, the as, I mean, this is public information that the, uh, the, the investigation isn't closed, so it's still ongoing. Um, so we just have to, we'll just have to wait. And I have interviewed the family exclusively too. And of mm. course they're really hurting, but they're, uh, you know, they're wonderful people. Um, but yeah, there's, there are all sorts of, uh, of course, after the speculation, once people, then the facts came out of kind of what happened or what allegedly happened uh, with Dr. Brad Street's death. But then now there are the speculations as to how, as to why, uh, if he were, if he were killed, then why that would happen. Or, right. But he had just been, uh, had the FDA Come in, and they had raided his office, but they hadn't arrested him, and uh, he was then going for a weekend getaway with his wife. So, uh, you know, and the the room wasn't ready. But I mean, there were rumors that it could be related to the GC math, and I I don't dispute that. I think somehow that's connected. Obviously, one one way or the other, I think that's that's tied in with the. Uh, with at least with Dr. Bradstreet. I know some people would like to say that's the smoking gun for all the doctors, but mm-hmm. I I can't you know say that's true of all all doctors, but maybe some of them and definitely Dr. Bradstreet. So Right. And that's the uh the GF map is one of these uh, cures, right? It's one of these cancer cures. Well, yeah, he was um had been legally using it um on his patients and I've I just did recently uh met a mother who he has a patient of her child and had great results. But yes, the GC math was used uh, with the, uh, especially with autism patients and cancer patients. And uh, they, some, some people, I, I haven't talked to anyone who had negative, anybody who's had negative results. I know there's all sorts of reports in mainstream about that, but they all had had positive uh, results, you know, positive results had great things to say about him and the GC math, at least for their children, the ones that I've talked with. Yeah. Right, right. So his um, his work in in the autism uh, area is quite interesting too, obviously, because we've had uh, a lot of things unfolding with the uh, the whole vaccine debacle. Uh, just uh, when was that again? Was that earlier last year, I believe, when that really started to unfold and unravel? Did he have a large part in that in some way? Do you think? Yeah, I think it was just really January, which is interesting now that you mentioned it. Was, it. Huh? Um, yeah. yeah, or just December, January. Um, I. It, I don't know. Um, I, that's a good question. That's a very good question. I don't know how in- involved he was. I mean, I know a lot of the doctors were out were outspoken um, that they felt that uh, that would have been with the measles, some more the MMR vaccination. Um, that some of these doctors felt that there were and there are there. I mean, are proven vaccine injuries from MMR. Uh, there were there are some who would go further and say uh, that it could. Uh, cause autism or be connected and, you know, be part of that. So it just depends on the person, what, what their feelings are with that. But um, I do know families with kids who had small kids who were healthy and they got the MMR vaccine and they were then injured after that, whether uh, brain injury, autism. So that then developed rather quickly. So yeah. 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 yeah what a story. Now there was uh it was a GoFundMe campaign as well, wasn't it, to, to try to figure out what happened? Did you keep up with that? Do you know what happened? I think that was in June or something, wasn't it? Yes, I interviewed the Bradstreets who had the uh, GoFundMe and all the money raised that 
they have would go into their own investigation, which is just still ongoing. So they've uh, hired their own investigators. I think that much I can say, uh, and and they've stated that publicly, and uh, they're just still working on their own uh, investigation to see what they you know, what they uncover, what they find out, just really to get to the bottom of it. I don't think, and I can't, of course, I can't really speak for the family, but they've sure, said yeah. whatever, but they have said publicly, uh, they've, they've been wonderful, by the way, but they just really want to get to the bottom of this. So I can't imagine how they feel, how they must be hurting. And they just, it, it's really difficult, I think, when you have, you're told that, uh, you know, whether it's your, your brother, your brother-in-law, whatever the, your father, whatever the relation that he's, he's gone to check in to a hotel and the room isn't ready. So he goes to the store to get some hummus and wine. I think if it were, uh, my, uh, say my father or something, it would be really difficult for me to believe that he went and bought the item so he could then, you know, he couldn't check into the room yet. He's coming back, headed, going to be headed back toward the hotel with the food he bought. And then he uh, just decides to kill himself just doesn't really make sense and shoot right. himself in a river. So um, in it, in the chest and the river. Yeah. It just doesn't add up um, so for what, many what, people. Sorry to interrupt. So he was, okay. So he had a gunshot wound to the, to the chest and he was found floating in, in, in the, in the river. Yes. I don't know if it was actually floating. I've seen uh, some recent interviews with the chief, uh, detective there for what it's worth. And uh, I think, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be floating. I forget if they say he was, uh, on found which, which way he was floating on his back on the front, but yeah, he was, he was found in the river. That is correct. Yeah. So within, and the gun, um, somewhere they, they found the gun in the water as well. So just to miraculously found that that too it didn't float away, I guess. Well, that's good. That's convenient yeah. and yeah. <laughs> interesting detail. Uh, he was caught then in Shelby, which is <laughs> which is the same uh, town where this very bizarre arrest of Dylan Roof occurred. I don't know if you ever saw that footage. I, mean, I it's, did, <laughs> it's yes. Like, it's, hmm. And it was almost the same. I, I'm still trying to figure out because of when exactly. Uh, I think it's literally within a 72-hour, like 48-hour period of one another. Which I've, Oh, I've, really? I've, That's tight. Yeah, I wrote about oh. that when I first, because, I, you know, it was so interesting when I did the story on Dr. Brad Street, of course, I was sad and just feeling so badly for friends and people, uh, my friends who knew him well. And uh, so I, I see Shelby, Shelby, why do I know that? And then I realized it was just, but see, I didn't write about it until several days after, of course, he had, his body had been found, but I thought, oh my gosh, that's where uh, the Dylan Roof, you know, was, was uh, where they captured him. You know, so it was just so strange. I always thought that was... Uh, that was a, just a strange coincidence. If any of these things are coincidences, well, maybe know. that's the the town you can go to. Uh, you know, pay off the pay off the cops and and have them uh, go along with your story or something. You know. Well, yeah, I really am. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I, and I'm not a big fan of the chief detective and not a, or chief. Uh, would he be? I guess that's his title, and not afraid to say that too. Just with some of the things he suggested, based on pure speculation, mm -hmm. I just am not. I will openly say that um, I, I think many are pretty seriously disappointed in his investigation or lack thereof or the job that he did or the conclusions to which he jumped. So, yeah. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's it's one of these cases then that that opened up the, the whole thing for you. There's a lot of other people here we'll, we'll talk more about. But what, what more do you think we should know about um, that case or maybe perhaps how it fits into all these other cases that we'll talk more about? Well, I think that, uh, you know, many think that he was, uh, they said, well, gosh, he was just raided. He was going to prison. But I think it's, it needs to be made clear. Uh, and who knows, like you might be right about, <laughs> you could be very right about Shelby, the town itself, but that he, um, I just feel like people need to know that he wasn't arrested. And uh, I know somebody said, well, you know, I'd heard that, you know, these were these rumors go, and it could be true that he had uh, secured an attorney or, you know, ha, ha, what do you do? Ha, whatever you do with an attorney, you would put down kind of a, have one on uh, retainer, so to speak after that. And I thought, yeah, I, I would do that too. If the FDA came into my office, I don't <laughs> think that's, that doesn't seem unusual at all. Sure. That, uh, so I just think people need to realize that 
He dealt with the the feds before, and the FDA did come in. They allegedly did not find any GCMAF, so I don't. Um, I just am not sure why he would feel it. Uh, you know, I know I, I don't like to speculate too much, but I I think that it's pretty. Um, it would be presumptuous for people just to say right off the bat, no, well, that, you know, just must be, must have just killed himself. What? Be- why, of course, because they went into the office. And I don't think that's reason enough to just assume that off the bat. So, What, what would you say to um, those potentials we have listening that, you know, they think that uh, FDA and these other organizations are, are, are good, that these are things that we need that, you know, somehow just because he was in in contact with them on this capacity of, 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 of being potentially, you know, investigated and all these kinds of things that, uh, well, basically where there's smoke, there must be fire, right? That somehow he was doing something wrong. What, what would you say to those people that have that uh, level of allegiance to the FBA and the likes? Well, I, I, I think that as time goes on, more and more people are waking up to realize that the FDA is not really a watchdog group for, it hasn't been for many, many years. I think it started out that way, but uh, it's, they're not really, uh, they're more of a lapdog group, uh, lapdogs for the drug industry than a watchdog group. That's really what it boils down to. And I think as time goes on, people will be, are, are, they're finally seeing the light that, wow, these guys really don't have we, the people in their best interest. So I, uh, you know, I think that GC math, it's just so interesting that they're always going after supplements or, and I'm not saying that GC math is great for everybody, but um, it's interesting that they outlawed it uh, not long after people were seeing results. So, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. What, what is, what do, what do you know about that? By the way, I, I'm not too familiar with that at all. What procedure is that? I, you know, it's because since I think it's been kind of a whirlwind with so many doctors and then others who we knew as well uh, dying that I'm no, no expert on it, but just the put it in just basic terms for the folks out there. Uh, oftentimes people, whether they have cancer or if they have autism, they're, uh, th- then you can get a test for it for nagalase. The nagalase uh, can be high in the body, which isn't good. It's often high in especially children with autism, for instance. So the GC math would uh, help. It's a, it would be made from either, it's not really a drug because it's natural and it's from human blood or from, you know, cow's blood. And it would, it, oftentimes bring those nagalase levels down, which then in turn would help say the autistic the child who has autism. So right. um, that's, that's really it in a nutshell. There is a, a, there are a couple of videos out there that talk about the macrophage and how that works. And um, some say, you know, how it's, it's kind of eats the cancer cells for those who have cancer. I mean, there's a lot of different theories, but I just from talking with people who had success with it, um, I would say, that uh, it, it, for some people, it really does work, kind of like anything with with any, whether it be conventional or natural. But this seemed to work for a lot of people in particular. So right. I mean, a lot of people. This this GC math in particular. So yeah. interesting. Yeah, is it is it something with the white uh, blood cells then the count? Do you help that to go up or something? I yeah, I have to. I definitely can. Um, we could uh, like maybe I don't know if you show graphics, but find I could find a good little chart that shows all the intricacies of it. I found myself, like I thought, oh gosh, if I go down and study that too much, it was like before I could, unfortunately I'd have another doctor die. So yeah, I still have right. a, a lot of research to do on it. And right. I won't lie. Right. I'm, I won't lie. I'm no expert on the GC, <laughs> on the GC map. Yet, sure. So. Sure. No, I just curious. We can always link, the, if you have that, we can link that up on the program page. So people can take a look that's listening. That's curious. We'll, we'll add some link to it as well, folks, uh, in case you want to find out more, but yeah, let, let's talk about you know, basically all the others so that consequently has, has happened here. I mean, first of all, let's just see how many we're talking about so far to date that you kind of connect in the, uh, well, in, in the same story is, is, is everyone you've come across something that you add into it or is it circumstances depending on how they have, how they have died? Where do we draw the line there? If you will. Well, I had like kind of 12 official doctors that would be included uh, mainly because most were holistic, but also because none of them were accidents. I, I There's kind of another list I'd made of unusual car accidents, or we just had that famous doctor who was 
partnering with Deepak Chopra. Her name her name was Dr. Zimmerman. She was a doctor for ABC, like national news. She died in a strange accident. But for the for the twelve main doctors, um, I didn't. It, it, it just kind of stuck with either ones that were alleged suicide uh, or m- murder. There are four murders, or then uh, like a handful where they just uh, died suddenly, like. Suzanne Summers' doctor, Dr. Gonzalez, but by then he was the about the eighth doctor. Um, they were, you know, they had they got the autopsy. They said it was they thought it was heart attack, and then no, the autopsy showed. Uh, they said it, they put right on the front of a site that he was in perfect health, and that it, their initial belief of heart attack would not be substantiated with the autopsy because it shows uh, no heart, that there would have been no heart attack. So just, right. uh, yeah. So it's really just suspicious like that, but not accidental. Um, and so it would be more murder, alleged suicide or strange, just, you know, dropping dead out of nowhere. I know it sounds terrible, but it's kind of what happened. So, yeah. Tell us, uh, let's just kind of run through that list if you will. And we can, you, you can share with however much you want with them, whatever you know about them. I know you've, as you said, you've written a story about it and, uh, it's, it's very close as well. It's basically, uh, I mean, every, a couple every week almost, right? Yes. Uh, it had, it, it yeah, it's, it, it, really had been since June 19th. It, well, and especially just recently we've had these accidents, which I haven't counted, but even with that, it's been, it had sometimes been even two a day. I will say that uh, lately, just after these accidents that it seems, well, at least since Dr. Poss, which is, maybe three weeks ago, there hasn't been one for a little while. So that's great. And I hope that that, that's it. And it was some, you know, I I would call it the cruel summer and just, just think that once, once the season ends, it's got to stop, you know, because you do get a little wrapped in it, up in it. And I have talked to uh, family members of other doctors as well, not just the Bradstreets, but yeah. So we had after, um, June 19th, and I'm just, just kind of off the top of my head. Sometimes I'll just look at a picture of them to remember, but I don't even need the dates. It's kind of sad anymore. But um, Dr. Bradstreet was June 19th. And then on the 21st, which was Father's Day, um, we had Dr. Bruce Hedendahl, which was just, he's just a couple hours south of us here in Florida. And then just north of us, um, Dr. Baron Holt. So two, uh, they were they were chiropractors. Dr. Hedendahl also had a PhD from Harvard in nutrition and was uh, had a radio show, very outspoken, uh, successful and just amazing man. And then Dr. Holt, who was only 33, so much younger uh, and Dr. Let's say Dr. Hedendahl was in his sixties. I don't want to say exactly if he was 67, but he looked uh, far younger. He'd been a professional athlete and uh, won many competitions and was in better shape than I am. I mean, (laughs) now, I mean, he was just an uh, amazing, he looks like, he looks like he'd be doing something in Olympics. He looks like a professional full-time athlete or something, but Mm -hmm. Dr. Baron Holt too was also very fit. And so many people loved him and he was only 33 and I have heard different again, uh, rumors, but no, uh, even from doctors who I know who knew him, but no 100% confirmation on his death. So I, you know, because he was so young and for the family, I just didn't write up what any of those you know, what those rumors were, but I can say that, uh, the rumors I'd heard, none were natural. Uh, so yeah, Mm -hmm. just very suspicious. I mean, definitely suspicious. And, uh, Dr. Hedendahl, uh, a couple of his friends, family or loved ones have gone on even TV saying that they are, um, they just, they want answers. They just don't, they're, they, they find it suspicious that he was Dr. Hedendahl, even being in his sixties was in, Uh, like it looks he was actually at an uh, athletic event that day Uh, he did the discus throwing uh, and I don't know a whole lot about sports and it is true that they say he didn't uh, feel well just before he went to his car but I mean he had just competed in an event and knew his body very well and so it's unusual from the people I talked with that he would just go to the car and uh and and die uh, so yeah mm. it's it's just yeah so another one that would be suspicious and even back then was to some people and i've had many uh, again, with all these doctors countless patients friends 
or or family, right? And of course, the family love him, but his, so so did his patients. They all felt like they were friends with these doctors, you know, every last one. So right, or they, they were they they felt like they were their doctor and their friend, which is a beautiful thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Tell us tell us more who we're uh, oh, yes. talking about here. Yeah. So then then after that, um, so then just a few days later, I think it was the twenty ninth. Also in Florida, we had Dr. Teresa Sievers, and she uh, was a holistic MD like Dr. Bradstreet. So you had the MD, then two DCs, uh, you know, doctors of chiropractic in Florida, and then just days later, Dr. Teresa Sievers. And uh, she was found dead, definitely, uh, you know, confirmed uh, murder, unfortunately, in her home with a hammer. And, uh, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's really, it's really tragic. And her husband and kids were up with her family up in the Northeast at a family um, reunion. And she'd come back the night before because she had to see patients Monday morning. So it happened on a Sunday night and, uh, they found her Monday morning, or I shouldn't say when it, I shouldn't say exactly when it happened. I could have been, there's some people say they heard something around 5 a.m. Monday morning, but sometime between Sunday night and uh, Monday morning or Monday when they found her, she was killed. And there have mm -hmm. been two, and I've updated it because there have been um, two arrests on that. But it's just, again, very just strange. Um, you know, that it was her husband, her husband's friend was arrested, but they say that he had traveled from Missouri uh, down to kill her in you know, all the way in Florida. And then some say it was going to be, it was, you know, robbery, but just, there's lots of speculation. There was another, um, young man, younger man, Jimmy Rogers, who was arrested, who literally called himself hammer or the hammer on Facebook. <laughs> really? So there's people who think that's a false flag mm. and just very strange or, but okay. So, you know, I don't like to speculate, but there are those who say, if the husband were involved, he had his friend do it. But his friend, Curtis Wayne Wright, says that his lawyer says, look, we so he has to be extradited because mm. he, they arrested him in a state where, with his wife, family. He says he can easily prove he was never even there. Um, but, yeah, that's it's all very interesting. The, the sheriff there says books and movies will be written when all the facts come out on it. And, uh, again, the husband hasn't been arrested months and months later. So I, we don't know why his friend would travel you know, hundreds or thousands of miles to do this. It's just all bizarre. very, yeah, yeah, very, very bizarre. bizarre. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And so that one, uh, still unsolved and, uh, arrests have been made, but, and charges of two charges of murder, but we'll see what happens with that. Then we had, um, just after that would have been, uh, Lisa Riley, who was an osteopath in, uh, Georgia. So another, we're all kind of in the same area between just the Southeast here, whether it's, you know, right in Florida or just North of us. And, uh, so, uh, Lisa Riley was only, I believe 34 and, uh, she was found dead with a gunshot wound to her head. Um, and since I wrote that article, her husband was arrested, but it's another strange thing because Yo, Thomas Riley, her husband, had been arrested before with his ex for attempted murder, but then it was found that allegedly her story didn't, her story changed, his didn't, or whatever. So they mm -hmm. they said there was nothing enough to charge him with, so he was let go. He was, and it, actually, there were whole articles written about how he shouldn't have been held so long with this other case. So he was never charged. And yes, it does sound like he had, uh, there had been some incidents before her death that, you know, I don't know if it was, um, a b domestic things. There were some domestic, obviously some domestic problems, but, um, I don't know. So right now he has been arrested for the murder, but again, and, and maybe, you know, with maybe these arrests, it's correct, but I, I don't know right. yet. I, I would say innocent until proven guilty. So we just don't know on sure. that. Yeah. Um, and he maintains his innocence. Uh, and then let's see, after that, we would have had Dr. Ron Schwartz, who again, just right days, just, I mean, hours, days later after Dr. Riley, who was an osteopath, a DO, um, was killed one way or the other. Then Dr. Ron Schwartz was found murdered in his home uh, just a few hours south of here in Jupiter, Florida. And uh, they say it was targeted, but, you know, it wasn't just a random thing. Like if it was, some are saying 
home invasion, but he was shot several times and, and killed. And he's been one of the few, there's been the littlest information on, there's been no arrest and uh, it's still unsolved like so many of these others. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, just really crazy. And then during this whole time, there were other two, a few other doctors that went missing, including uh, Jeffrey Whiteside. And he wasn't holistic, but I just, I think it was just that whole time when all these things were going on. He did a lot of these doctors definitely were working with cancer patients or patients who were very ill. And Dr. Whiteside, uh, his his patients who have come forward have said how wonderful he was, what a great doctor he was. But he'd been talking with his family, and this is one that wouldn't be in this region. It would be Wisconsin. None of them though are like West coast or anything. They're definitely most are East coast, but he was right. Wisconsin talking with his wife and family. And they had a little spat in a public place, like at a boat dock there on, um, in Ephraim, uh, Wisconsin, this little peninsula. And then he walked away and long story short, weeks and weeks later, he was found dead with a gunshot wound to his head. They have, it is the only one I believe. And I'll have to check that again in a second that they, it was a suicide where it has been ruled a suicide. Uh, the, the case right. has been ruled because it hasn't on Dr. Bradstreet yet. And so um, he, I guess, walked away. I guess maybe he had a, allegedly had a gun on him. We don't know, but it was weeks later and the local press said that it was uh, just a mess. That's what they called it. The local press put in the local papers that the whole investigation was a mess, that they just mm. felt it was so strange. Why did it take so many weeks? Uh, people had come forward, allegedly, who had even written me saying they wanted to search, but they wouldn't. And then so they find him, but it took weeks and weeks. And uh, just another suspicious uh, death. And also it was a very small gun from what I understand. I don't remember if that one was the forty five caliber, but it wouldn't be one you'd really could be slow, slow death that you'd want to use to kill to take your life. So, right. Um, yeah. And then right after, so when there's still another um, doctor missing a uh, name, Dr. Fitzpatrick, who was um, a kind of a naturist and he was um, out around the same time he went missing as Dr. Whiteside and he's still never been found. They just found his car kind of like there was a cornfield along the side of the road. And some had said, because he was one of the oldest, maybe early seventies that, I mean, he went on trips. He was crossing, going to another state to see his son. Um, oh, maybe he just, you know, walked out and got lost. Well, they never found him. So it's very strange. And just his car along the side of the road, like by a cornfield or something. So mm. um, he's still missing. And I hope there's some you know, chance he's found alive. Um, and then right after that, they found uh, Nick, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, who was in New York City, very well known. Um, we knew him. Uh, that, so that was very difficult. But he was um, it just suddenly collapsed and died. And that's the one where they thought it was initially a heart attack, but the fan, it's been posted right on the front of his official website that uh, the initial belief was of a heart attack does not seem to be true. And they reiterate and emphasize that he was very healthy as mm -hmm. far as they knew great health just before he died of, um, of not of what they can't just figure out. So that is uh, strange. And then we had a holistic, dentist, the only dentist that I put in my story, who was, I believe, just 41 turning 42 or just turned 42, but he was training for like a half marathon in amazing shape. Uh, his friend of since, I mean, he was also, he's in his early forties. So his friends, that was his fraternity brother in college. So he had to know him like at least 20 years it was also his patient. His dear friend said it didn't add up. He was in amazing shape. He's training for this event. He is, um, he said he ate so well. His, if you look at his Facebook pages, it's all about integrative, natural health, you know, keeping your teeth about holistic dentistry, keeping your teeth clean, no plaque, you know, get, so your heart, your heart is healthy. And, uh, he was just found dead by a passerby on the side of the road at night. And again, they said it was a heart attack. The initial belief was it was a heart attack. And I never heard any follow up on that. And I don't ever, you know, try to contact family members. If they come to me, that's fine. But um, right. I think they, they mm -hmm. wrote me and said, oh, can you someone someone wrote, I don't want to say it's family, but I did verify it was someone who knew him and said, oh, could you change this one little thing here, you know, with a link or something? I said, sure. So but yeah, right. I didn't. Yeah. 
And then um, then we have just after that, Mary Bouvier, who is uh, also an osteopath, found stabbed to death in her home. And uh, I believe she was had a significant other. I think they lived like next door to each other, who was also a DO. But he was never charged. And there's been no charge. It's been many months. And she was found stabbed to death. And so still no explanation um, on her. And then just we're almost there. Then after that was another doctor we knew. Um, Mitch, Mitch Gaynor. And uh, he was very well known, had been on Dr. Oz, like so many of the others actually had books. Um, He had just given us a copy, advanced copy of his book, um, you know, months before he would be found dead. And uh, he was found out, I am told, it was found at his country home outside New York City, but I am told that it was uh, outside and uh, that he, they, they're they saying that it, uh, the initial ruling, that it's suicide. So definitely wasn't a natural death. Right. And so <laughs> I think more than anyone, I think at this point, as you get up to more and more doctors, I had so many people contact me um, that would just say they just could not believe they knew the man 20 years. Some were his friend, his patient, and doctors themselves. I guess every doctor still has to have a doctor they go to sometimes. And that he was, first of all, just with every one of these doctors, just they had nothing but you know wonderful things to say. But there were people who had been in remission for years from cancer, especially like from Dr. Gaynor or with Dr. Gonzalez, since that was their specialty. Um, and they were both in New York City, both within you know, weeks of each other, um, even though Dr. Gonzalez, of course, dropped dead, can't find out a reason why. And then Dr. Gaynor supposedly took his own life uh, just after having a great book come out. It just, yeah, doesn't seem to add up and being on Dr. No. Oz. No. Oz. And then the last one was Dr. Marie Poss, who was a young chiropractor. I don't think I ever got her um, exact age, but she was, don't know as much about her. She also was a detoxification detoxification specialist on top of being a, a chiropractor and she was a chiropractor um, like all the other ones recently I were talking about were MDs or DOs and or the dentist and she um was allegedly again suicide this was just weeks ago and I have people still writing me saying they just seen her at an event and can't believe that and also she had her thing big thing on her Facebook page was her animals that she animal rescues her own animals and so i saw the comments before somebody took the whole page down after her death which they didn't mm. do in any of the other cases especially a personal page maybe the business page but not the personal and people yeah. said well, well how could she do that what about her animals they just no one could fathom that and um people write me and say look i just saw her and i bet my life she didn't take her own life so then that's but you know i don't have any confirmation on that and i don't know if it's Actually, I don't know if that one is ruled a suicide or if there's still an investigation ongoing. So right. That's that's it. Yeah. Wow. It's a oh boy. Yeah. Wasn't there yeah. something in uh, in Germany as well? There was something. Was that was that an individual case? Was that a whole group that had been? Um, what, what happened there? To, that is still a little bit of a mystery, but I know a, a, a bit more. I had to get a friend to <laughs> that speaks fluent German kind of as like in like you in between the states and Europe so he um he did interpret a few articles from the German newspapers but what happened is there were 29 um i guess what's being described now is some were holistic doctors or was a home they're calling it a homeopathic conference um they've been referred to as uh, holistic, homeopathic, naturopaths. I mean, definitely all the German newspapers were calling them naturopaths. Some said there were a few psychologists and they became extremely um, ill. And I'm trying to think now it's as time has passed. I think that was in September. I will have to click on that and see what the, uh, what it was they, that they found that they took, but it was, it had just become illegal in Germany a few years ago, it was called, yeah, 2CE or aqua rust. So it's kind of like a, uh, it's, it's a strange, uh, it's a psychedelic drug um, and a, a bit of a hallucinogenic, but they took very uh, allegedly took 
big overdoses of this. Some of mm. some of them were life threat in life threatening situation. The German newspaper said, and I mean, I have articles interpreted that I've put up, um, and so it was at this what they called the Altmat Med Homeopathic Health Conference, right. and yep. even even the experts there said a couple experts who were quoted said that even if they were doing it knowingly that they, for whatever reason, they can't, couldn't imagine they would take these huge overdoses that left some of them where they could have died. They had to be strapped down some of them for, um, allegedly for definitely hours or some I heard were allegedly days strapped down. So they didn't hurt or injure themselves. They were, this, mm. these were big overdoses. It wasn't like they just did a tiny normal amount. So that is strange. Um, and there's been a few theories, like one said that they were going to do this meditation class, so they were going to take something. But then people are saying, even if they were going to take this and see what the outcome was, they're smart enough, these doctors, to know, or you know, homeopaths, naturopaths, not to take huge overdoses and almost kill themselves. And now it's like radio silence. Uh, they're, they're not talking and initially. I think a few were... Uh, want, it, it, I had been told wanted to come forward, but then silence, no information. Mm. So right. just, just strange. Um, but yeah, thankfully on that story, at least everybody did survive. And I hope all of them have made a full recovery and get to the bottom of it. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah, almost like they've been uh, poisoned with this rather than uh, <laughs> taking it voluntarily in some way. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, it's, it's very, yeah, it's very strange. So I know it's just, yeah, that they would take that or be given that big of an overdose. So yeah. And it's strange. None of them are talking to the press. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The language barrier can be there of course sometimes, but, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd think that then speak about this now. Okay. So that's kind of a, it's a little bit of a different case, but nonetheless, it comes in the, in the wake of, of everything else here we've been talking about. But so, Tell us a bit what you actually, what do you think about this? I mean, I, I know you might not like to speculate too much, but obviously um, I wonder what the statistics for something like this would be in, in terms of co the, these coincidences that it's it's doctors. And I mean, we know that there's a lot of, uh, there there are crimes, there are home invasions, people do get shot, there are robberies and all these kinds of things. But what I'm saying is statistically for, for the fact that all these people are, uh, you know, holistic doctors and, and involved in these kinds of fields, uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty rare, pretty high uh, probability on something like that. Sure. Yes. We had even looked up suicides and sometimes there are high you know, rates of suicide amongst doctors. But for this many in this short amount of time, I had been looking, for instance, throughout the summer for deaths that were not, you know, obviously if a doctor sadly died of a an illness or they're of old age or things like that. Then that I, but even just doctors who had uh, just had accidents, whether they were holistic or not, it was hard to find this many for the whole summer of just non you know, non holistic doctors to, for this. I think it in this small circle, this kind of small community of holistic doctors, there aren't really that many, especially a few that were very prominent. I mean, these, a couple of these doctors are really world renowned um, and all of them amazing, but that they died in that sh short of time is amount of time, I think is really just, it's a, a little bit mind blowing that we knew more than one. And, you know, I never knew when I wrote about Dr. Bradstreet that literally before I finished that article, two more had died and just within yeah. what, 48 hours. So yeah, it's, I think that, uh, statistically as far if you just were to say hey it were, they were all just doctors and didn't you know some of them didn't know each other we didn't know almost you know the majority we knew the majority of them um then maybe it wouldn't be uh that strange but just the small the fields that this the small field that they are in um yeah it's it seems pretty unusual so, so what what do you think what, what might be what might be going uh, on here if it were um not you know i always say it could be a big giant coincidence or a conspiracy. If you were to go with the conspiracy th theory for, I never use that word in my articles, but it comes out sometimes for, for lack of better words. Um, I think that all of them were outspoken and I am the GC math. I would like to look deeper into that. If I would like to know how many more of the doctors were, you know, confirmed that they had 
use GC math or we're researching GC math. Also, I don't think that that's just the smoking gun. I think another thing that some were very outspoken about was cannabis or cannabis oil. Um, Dr. Bradstreet um, especially had done whole shows with friends of mine, programs about cannabis oil and the research he was doing on that. So I know that people say cannabis oil, come on, it's legal in all these states and it's no big deal. But I mean, if just, just to entertain kind of any people out there who might have that, and I could don't blame them, that many millions of people have read the articles that have these this feeling there could be something else beyond coincidence. I wonder if it's not the uh, it, kind of a combination. I, I've talked with a couple holistic, other holistic MDs that are still alive, and I didn't know they thought the same thing I did, that it wasn't really just maybe, if it were more than a coincidence, not just the GC math, but maybe the cannabis oil too, because it's definitely, th- I mean, you think something like a plant is really that threatening, but hey, it's legal in 23 states now and increasing every day. And I think eventually it's really going to frighten some large corporations that maybe pharmaceutical corporations, because the uh, it's in, even in mainstream news that the cannabis is working so well uh, for, for so many illnesses, including cancer. So, yeah. And that's the, uh, like the, uh, the, the, the oil, right. The, the concentrate or whatever you want to call that. It's not just, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a different procedure to actually, uh, to, to, uh, to make that or to, you know, to process that in such a way we had, uh, what's his name? Rick Simpson on, on the show. Oh, great. Uh, talking okay. about this. It's, great. it's, uh, what is this? Two th- it's more now It's four, probably four years ago or something like that. And he, sure. you know, he didn't produce any of this himself, but he, he talked about the process and how to do it and all that. But it seems highly, highly, uh, you know, potent in, 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 the, in this capacity. And I've also heard from some people who have, uh, you know, uh, tr- tried it and, uh, and it seems to do, uh, do the trick in some cases. It's amazing. Yes, I actually had been in Colorado doing the show for Gaim about the, the doctors. So when I was out there, um, doing the TV show, I went to the dispensaries, some of the medical dispensaries, pharmacies, and I was really fortunate. It was, I I called ahead of time, not too far ahead of time because the show was kind of last notice, but I I was fortunate to know someone and then get into some of the biggest dispensaries. And when I really, I, I mean, I saw the grow houses and I have video and all this of, you know, thousands of plants and, uh, watched, I actually went to, um, the kitchen where they actually take the flour, as they call it, the cannabis, and make it into the oil. So I watched the whole process recorded. They let me record the whole thing and go in with cameras. And it was amazing. I mean, I had a woman who owns one. I mean, she's on the front of you know, magazines and different things with her large dispensaries and tell me that she'll have uh, cancer patients or especially children with seizures, even one-year-old babies who are having miraculous results. Um, she tells me getting off of their drugs or steroids, uh, and because the cannabis oil, because what the, mm-hmm. the, what the cannabis oil can do or the cancer. I mean, you see stories, even in mainstream news about people who, uh, either tried to go the chemo route. There was just a story I did about a man. I mean, he's interviewed and everything that was an elderly who was, uh, going to hospice and decided to do the he did two different types of uh, cannabis oil. I think one was high THC because you can do, it's actually cannabis oil and it has the CBD to THC ratio. Mm -hmm. And he did this, I know a little bit more about, and he did the high THC ratio and uh, he walked out of hospice and he, they, he's cancer free. So um, I think it scares. Yeah. I think that could scare some powers that be out there. Is is that potentially what's happening here that these are, uh, uh, the people we've been talking about here, they're alternative practitioners. They are looking at different ways of, uh, of tackling these problematic health ailments. And consequently, uh, well, who knows, right? Is, is someone trying to take out the competition, for the lack of a better term? It could be. I, I want to do more research, you know, before I would. I know some people want to jump to the conclusion they're not, you know, they're not related. There's no way they're related. Well, I think that's hard to say. But on the other hand, I just don't have enough information to know the definitive connection or if that is the, is that the link? You know, I just, uh, it's hard to say, but it definitely is a distinct possibility. And I get emails every day of people who tell me stranger stories or, you know, that just they're, they're convinced that it is even other uh, medical doctors that, that are, uh, 
you know, just they're, they're concerned, but they, they definitely think that could be that, I mean, that they were outspoken, that the, the GC map, the cannabis, that somebody could be taking them out. So, yeah, well, yeah. you know, it, it, it would also be, um, t- taking out the, well, some of the knowledge out of, it would take that out of circulation in some of these towns and cities where they have their practice basically. And, yeah. uh, because I can't, I can't imagine that you have, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of practitioners in, in the same smaller towns, but it would probably be one or two or something like that. So if, the, if they're gone, kind of, that's it. And, and no one else like that might return back to that er- area. We, 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 we don't know that yet, of course, but it's, um, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit weird. I gotta say, it's one of the strangest ca- cases recently I've heard about in terms of the, the fact that they're taken out like this. And we haven't we can't just put it, you know, past um, the competition uh, to do something like this as well. We've had many other strange cases where uh, where people are are offed uh, and suicided, as I say, in other ways. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and and it, we can't we can't look the other way towards this. This is a real possibility because. You know, if they don't, if they don't want to have the solutions to these kinds of issues and problems out there, then who knows? Maybe I mean, there's, there, it's not an issue of money as as far as they're concerned. They have endless of funds to pour into, and frankly, they could hire hire you know someone to to do the job for them. Basically, that's what I'm saying. Yes, no, I, that is true, and I know that I, I've had investigators contact me, um, and it's they. I know some of their theories are that it wouldn't be more than. I mean, these are some of them well-known investigators that aren't being paid to investigate the case, but they just, it's piqued their curiosity. And some have said to me, it really wouldn't be more than one person. I mean, not that it couldn't be that that if a corporation sent them, but they wouldn't send a group because by now somebody would have messed up or said, but he, I did this, you know, because they'd they'd have one person doing this, a a real professional that would uh, be able to have people die in just where they can't find a cause of death or uh, alleged uh, suicides and the, I mean we have three three men uh, all around the same age with almost thirty ex- years experience each between Dr. Whiteside, Dr. Bradstreet, and Dr. Gaynor, all found in the woods or river or with woods around them, uh, or because Dr. Gaynor had a a bigger property there, so he's found allegedly outside on the trees on his property, all outside, all alleged suicide, and these these three medical doctors were all very successful. And, uh, especially two out of three, since I know so many people in common with a two out of three that just don't think that they would, uh, take, take their own life. So, yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, there's other of these kinds of cases, high profile cases like, uh, uh, David Kelly, the weapons expert in, in Britain. And, you know, it's kind of the same, you remember that story? It was kind of the same thing. He was out in the walking in the, I don't know if it was the forest or he was taking a walk somewhere and the strangest, the strangest case and it seems to be that it's a very convenient way of of getting rid of people who might have knowledge that is that is simply too uh, too upsetting to to the powers, you know. Yes, yes, that it's that's true. And I think that at first there were skeptics, of course, with Doctor Bradstreet, and then even the uh, this three or four in a row. But I think even some of those people now that they see so many in a short period of time, uh, yeah, even they're now skeptical that. They're just not related, and they all just took these like three, four of them all just took their lives. Yeah, it's very. You're right. It's uh, it's hard to dismiss. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, we shouldn't be naive about these kinds of things, and uh, and yeah. and put it past them because they're definitely in a position to to do these kinds of uh, things, you know. But um, why don't we we could take a short break here in a little bit, and then we can continue and talk more about this case and some of the other things, of course, that you. Uh, that you talk about and that you write and research as well. There's a lot of other uh, areas I'd like to ask you more about, but what I'm just uh, talking a bit more about your website before we take a break. And I know you have a, uh, a free ebook as well that you'd like to plug a little bit. So uh, tell us, uh, tell us what's in it. Oh, sure. Yes. My site is healthnutnews.com. And before I, you know, this fell in my lap about you know, in June about writing these crime stories, I actually would write uh, quite a bit about healthy organic recipes or the latest breaking news on natural health. And I do have a book uh, on there, the ebook, if they want to sign up for the newsletter, which I don't send frequently, (laughs) probably not frequently enough. And the book is just about my own um, journey about overcoming Lyme and some, uh, I the severe weight gain that 
weight that I lost and was able to keep off and just kind of talks about that journey and some of the things I did uh, that really helped me and uh, things I that I recommend. So the book is on the I mean, they just sign up and they get the book in an email. So it's really nice. And I've only had the site 22 months. So my direction definitely changed a little bit over the summer, but I still do. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't really what I intended, but you've been, I also uh, you've been typecast. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. It definitely was. Yeah, not planned, but um, but I still do definitely, re- and even more so now, do my best to research uh, with you know new studies coming out on all different kinds of subjects, or I'm writing about uh, fluoride vaccinations, all sorts of controversial things, and also just your natural health recipes or Lyme disease, autoimmune disorder. So it's really helpful stuff. And uh, yeah, it's all there on the site and the book is there as well for anybody who would like to get it. Well, you know, health is a super important uh, subject. If we, if we don't have that, we, there's many other things that, that becomes, uh, you know, that, that we basically can't put, you know, time into and effort into, and, and, and it becomes a, a uh, difficult just to uh, to you know have a functioning body basically with and that's why it's so important uh, and that's why why it's a subject we like to return to and and talk more about and it's you know super important so uh, yeah we can get into some of that more in the second segment here but uh, let me give the website again healthnotnews.com we'll have the link up and uh, as Aaron said do uh, sign up for the newsletter and uh, uh, take a look at the book as well but yeah we'll we'll take a short break here and then we'll be uh, we'll return with more after this. All right, we'll uh, proceed with Aaron in the second hour and talk uh, about a wide range of topics related to natural health, how to do things if you uh, are outside of the loop of modern medicine and the uh, prescription medications that, uh, by the way, kill more people every year than almost any other field. You see, when they do it, it's uh, perfectly fine. But if someone uh, does stupid things and take illicit drugs and also happen to uh, take an herb that we've been uh, using without a problem for a few thousand years before this uh, you know, new field of medicine showed up on the scene, well, we can conveniently blame the herb and feel good about making sure that the economic monster that is the health industry continues unchecked. We're also going to speak more about her uh, Lyme disease and weight gain story and how she got out of that. We will also address GMOs, water and fluoridation and many of the issues that are of primary concern to Erin, such as uh, you know baby products containing cancer-causing formaldehyde, etc. You know, uh, wonderful things like that that doesn't get any attention in the uh, press and of course when you juxtapose that to some of the other things and issues that they deal with these days it's truly remarkable that the media can continue the way they do uh, without being challenged for their double standards and idiocy all right but uh, yeah tune into the second hour at redicemembers.com you know if you're new to the show if you like what we do and want to hear more please uh, go there to sign up for a membership it's only five euros per month Sign up for a uh, three-month subscription. You know, you can try it out, check out the archives, uh, and also support independent media that gives you perspectives and also the truth behind many of the most important issues that we face at this time. Issues that many people don't want to or simply can't address. RedIceMembers.com is the website. Go there and also uh, check in our radio archive to see some of our upcoming guests. But we'll take a short break here and then we'll be right back with Erin Elizabeth in the second hour. (laughs) 